Hello, Tile friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Tile Money Podcast. I am Luke Miller, a licensed tile contractor here in the state of California, and I love talking about the business side of being a tile contractor. It is my sincere hope to assist you and give you encouragement to grow and um, build profitable, sustainable contracting businesses. Now, I am proud and I'm happy and excited to tell you that this episode is brought to you by the National Tile Contractors Association, as well as sponsored by Latacree International. So what this means, friends, is I'm going to be able to continue doing this podcast and spending more time and bringing you more content that I believe will be uh, even more valuable. And as I appreciate your patience, as I've uh, been, a, it's been a learning process for me. And I've enjoyed doing it. I, I sincerely enjoy the comments that you've been sending me, the messages, and the participation inside the Facebook group. So today I have a great interview with a tile guy. And this is uh, really going to be great for all of you who are interested in building your own websites, uh, getting SEO, uh, organic search online, um, finding, uh, having your customers find you on Google. We get into all those contexts, con um, all those uh topics because what Ben has done is he's really worked hard to to build this up build his business up online and in fact it's not it's not just his business he has a partner but he took the role on in the partnership to generate these leads and really he's got so many so much I'm not even you know I'm going to stop there you're going to see and you're going to love it you're probably going to want to listen to this one twice and you're definitely going to want to take notes at some point um, so I know you're going to enjoy this and benefit because I know I did so um, looking forward to coverings uh, next month, April 9th, and I hope to see a lot of you there. So without further ado, here's today's episode. Hey, Ben, how are you today? Thanks for being on my podcast, Tile Money. Luke, you are the man. I've been listening to you for a while now. Really enjoyed your show. I learned a lot from your show, and I like how we're, you're trying to elevate the tile business. That's big. So thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate you saying that. It means a lot. You know, um, I was looking at your website just a few minutes before we got on this phone call or this uh, video chat here. And, you know, you've got a beautiful website and you were telling me you're doing all the, the blog, the blog work and the blog posts and you're doing a lot of work there. So we definitely want to get into that. But before we get into all that and your partnership and all your mindset and you've got a lot to offer us here, I'm excited to be interviewing you. Um, what, what is something fun you like to do in your free time? Do you have any hobbies? Uh, yeah, um, what I do usually after work four days a week is I go and do CrossFit. That's okay. basically something I really like to do to stay fit. And I feel like that really gives me an edge over the other people that are in my industry. I, on, 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 the, uh, on the board at CrossFit, you know, they have the goals and everybody writes out their goals. And yeah. my goal on there is to be more fit than the competition. And okay. I look at tile as a sport. Yeah. I'm trying to get ready to be the best tile setter that I possibly can be. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's my hobby. I like to hike, uh, yeah. backpack type of stuff. Um, yeah, pretty much just anything outdoor activities. I like, I like that kind of stuff. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you have a, you have a family, Ben. So I'm imagining you're, you're doing a lot of that outdoor stuff with them, which is great. Yep. And I love, I love how you view tile as a sport and you're getting prepared. You're preparing yourself for the, for that. Yeah, we know these long days, we're running up and down those stairs, yeah. you know what, 40 times a day, yeah. up and down the stairs. And I was talking to a, a, a guy in law enforcement, he owns our gym, and I, I was talking to him and I said, and, he, and, he, and, I, and I told him my idea about how I do tile for a sport. And he's like, yeah, I can see that. And I'm like, you know, when he, I'm, he, I was like, you know, when you, in, when you look at a cop that's fit, Compared to a cop that's out of shape, yeah. who are you going to respect more? The cop that's fit or the one that's out of shape? He's like, yeah, that's true. I agree with you on that. It's the same thing in construction. Yeah. You know, who, who, who are you going to respect more? Who, are, who, who do you feel that's going to, that, that, that cut that needs to be modified a little bit? Is the guy that's not fit going to run down those stairs to modify that cut to make it perfect? That's your question right there. And it itself. <laughs> yeah, so, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> yeah, I like to be I like to be ready for that situation. Those long days that we have sometimes on your knees. 
Yeah. It, 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 it's a it's a tough business already. And you know, I kind of done the yo-yo thing in the past where I'm bigger, smaller. And let me tell you, when I'm not fit, those days are hard. Yeah. And my, my the quality of my work really suffers. And and uh when I was a kid in high school, I had this football coach and he was like a drill a drill in, instructor and he'd say, "Santos, you get dumb when you're tired," he'd tell me. <laughs> and it's true. That's that stuck with me my whole life. Santos, you get dumb when you're tired. Really? And one of my catchphrases is a fatigued tile man is a careless tile man. And we know in this business you cannot be careless. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important well, to not be fatigued. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I appreciate appreciate your outlook there. It's something um I know I could I could do better and and staying, you know, staying in shape. So and and then with your blog site too, you know, um, that's not an easy task. Uh, you know, that's kind of the, along the same, um, you know, thought process as staying in shape. You know, you've got to be consistent. You've got to have a schedule. Can you talk to us a little bit about about how you um, get motivated and stay on track with your blog posts because you have quite a few of them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. The blog is just persistence, and I. I use very, I have rudimentary writing skills that I been able to mobilize to help me make money, okay. right? And to put myself out as an authority. So when somebody comes on our site, you know, I have, I think 150 blog posts or something around that. Nice. My customers know that they're dealing with an authority at that point. Yeah. Basically, my, my uh, motivation for that is that uh, Jason and I, my, my partner, my associate, we're in a bathroom every day together and we talk yeah. and my blog is basically a, uh, it's basically our talks, what we talk about when we're in, stuck in the bathroom together yeah. and I'll write notes after the day. I'll say, wow, that would be make a really good blog post. Like the difference between a mirrored corner and a wrapped corner. Yeah. Most people don't know that. Yeah. And my, our last customer, he said, yeah, I really like that blog post about the mirror or, or the, the rap corner. I would have never thought of that. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so it's just that it's just stuff that I think about during the day with Jason and I think about. So and, when, when people are searching for, you know, a tile contractor or tile designs, you know, and, and Woodstock, Georgia, you know, there, there's a good chance they're going to find you because you've got a hundred and something, 150 blog posts. And once they start seeing, oh, you know, these guys are talking about design. What are some of the other subjects? I, I really like the one where you talked about how much will your new bathroom cost? Um, if, if there was one blog post that people talk to you about, like customers who find you, can you point to one in particular? Made um, every, uh, most of the jobs that we do, we, I do like a overview of them after they're all done with like the before pictures, the after pictures, the during pictures. And I write a story about how they went. Those are pretty cool. People okay. like those. And on the main body of my site, you know, um, I'll write about like what makes a tile installer king Yeah, is one of my, is one of the ones that's on the, like the main that you can go on my main homepage and you can click through to get to that site. And or that blog post, and it talks about how you know we're the last guys in, and we have to usually clean up after everybody else. And you know, oh, the yeah. rocker decided to do this wrong. Okay, the tile guy will fix it, and this, that, and the other thing, right? Yeah. So I try to build value through that. One, one mm, post. That's a tough one. One of my most popular ones. It's gotten thousands of visits throughout the world. It, believe it or not, from okay. you know, India. Uh, Russia, all over the world, is um, options for finishing your shower curb. So, in out out in the field, I would always see people topping off the shower curb with bullnose. Right. I hate that look because you have all these different pieces. It's harder to slope it all. All this kind of stuff, you know, all these okay. little grout joints, and that's where your shower your your the it see your curb sees the most action in that spot. Yeah. So I, I, I was like, well, that's a problem that, that, that people have or that somebody can get value out of if I write about it. Yeah. So I wrote about, you know, you can put a hard surface on there. You can do it with the tile and do it with profiles. 
that's been a really popular blog post and it hasn't necessarily gotten me a lot of any business. Okay. But, you know, the, the thousands of visits has helped somebody. So it's just good energy yeah. going there yeah. and it is what it is, right? Well, and even if someone, you know, didn't call you and say, Hey, I read, I, I read your post on, on curbs. I want to hire you. You, you know that because it's getting thousands of views and people are reading that, that, that helps your organic SEO. That helps your website authority as yeah. well. Google, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, that's a great thing about a blog yeah. is Google picks that stuff up. And if I, if I, if I put in uh, another awesome tile job in Marietta, Georgia, yeah. if, some, if somebody types that in, I'm going to come up. And another one that I noticed the other day is a, uh, um, I, I, I wrote about how I got my Weedy certification or how I went to their course and, yeah. and I had mentioned tile house, the place we shop, I had mentioned Marietta. And so just that on a whim the other day, I was talking to Charlie at the, at the store and I said, oh, let me type in Weedy Marietta. Guess who's the first guy that came up? Yeah. My blog post came up. I'm like, that's, Dang, awesome. that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't necessarily know what I'm doing <laughs> to make this work out, but let me just say Squarespace. It's a okay. great, it's a great uh, website builder. You can do it yourself. And I recommend yeah. doing it yourself because when you pay somebody else to do it, the biggest thing with the SEO is keeping it up to date and always refreshing the material. So yeah. I'm always put new pictures, always put new videos and yeah. Google picks up on that and says, you know, this guy's putting time into it. He's providing value to our, to, to our users, Google, yeah. and yeah. let's put him toward the top of the ranking. And that's what I'm finding that I, you, you, you type in tile Woodstock, Georgia, I come up. That's and really it, cool. And it's not something that happens immediately. It takes, you know, a very, it takes a good amount of time. But the, the thing that we were talking about earlier is, you spend an hour a day on Instagram. You spend an hour a day on Facebook, two hours, three hours. You watch TV for three hours a day, an hour a week on your website and yeah. personalize it to you. Yeah. Don't make it about, you know, if somebody else builds your website and you pay for that, that's awesome, I guess. Yeah. But it's not you. Yeah. You can do it. And there's technology out there that maybe you're not a good writer or you're not a good speller. There's tech out there that will proofread your stuff that will just uh, write like you talk. Yeah. Well, and what I love about it too is, is you mentioned something really important. You said, I don't know what I'm doing, but yet here all these months and even years later, you're seeing this pay off. I mean, it's not going to pay off on day one. You know, your first blog post is not most likely you could score, but it's yeah. not most likely going to get you a job. Or, or win a bit. But over time, your consistency and dedication to it is paying off big. And then I just wanted to say too, your website looks really awesome. Um, mobile first, I, I saw it on my mobile, on my phone. It looks really awesome. And then later I saw it on the computer and it, it still looks awesome, but it looks better on the phone, which yep. all the experts now say that's the way it should be. It should be mobile first and then computer yep. second because people are ditching their computers for, for iPhones. As, as, a tile, as a tile guy, um, I know this is hard for us, yeah. but with marketing and sales and all this, um, that, kind, that side of the business, perfect is the enemy of good. Yeah. So a lot of the problems I was dealing with with Jason when we first started on this mission was that he wanted everything perfect. And I'm like, no, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just put something out there yeah. and then you build on it. Yeah. Um, it's hard as tile guys because you try to get everything perfect and you're in that mindset where I want this to be perfect. Yeah. But with marketing, it's like just try to do it little by little by little. Like, like Google, because of technology, I have the app on my phone. It sends me a notification when my, my, my Google post is going to be um, expiring. So every week I post something on Google with pictures. Okay. And um, I have, a, I, I read a book about copywriting, how to write an advertisement, good yeah. words to use. Yeah. And I'll write an advertisement every week. I do it for my phone. It takes five minutes. I usually do it groggy when I wake up yeah. and, and, and I put it on Google and I like, I want to believe that that helps me um, when people search Google. 
Yeah. And a lot of the older generation, we had talked about this earlier that I talked to, I've heard multiple guys talk about this. Oh, Google, that just gets you tire kickers. And I'd like to rebut that by saying, when someone gets bamboozled on a shower or a bathroom, the yeah. first place they go is Google to find out what happened. And the really smart people, I like to say, the best tool you can have for a bathroom remodel is a mouse, a keyboard, and an internet connection and a, and a computer. That should be your first thing that you do. And where do they go for that? Google. Yeah. So I really encourage people, work, work yeah. Google. It's the modern phone book. Yeah, for sure. And, and now you mentioned the, the Google ad that you're updating once a week. Can you uh, just clarify again? Just stay, I think I know what you mean, but they have this free service, right? Yep. It's through Google Business. Okay. And it's an app. Download the app and you can put, you can put pictures on your Google profile yep. through that app and you can post kind of like Facebook every day if you wanted to, but I do it every week. When one expires, I put a fresh one up yeah. and you can link to stuff through there. Um, you can put um, a video on there. One time I recorded a video and I just said, hey, this is Ben from Hamilton Tile and I would like to help you with your next bathroom remodel yeah. by recommending my website, hamiltontilega.com. There's a ton of information on there and you can be prepared for your next bathroom remodel by visiting my website. Really cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks for mentioning all this. Uh, really great tools and free tools. You know, everything you mentioned is free. Um, we yeah. already own the equipment to do it. You know, we spent a thousand dollars, some of us, on an iPhone six or so. Well, now we're up to ten, right? <laughs> but exactly. um, you know what I mean. We already own this expensive equipment that works. And like you said, it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to have lighting perfect. Speaking of lighting, you know, I'm in the shade over here as the sun goes down behind my back, yep. but. It's getting that content out there. And do you track your, where your leads come from, Ben? I did. I have. Yeah. Recently, this 2019, I have a list right here yeah. of, from last year of all my leads and where they came from. I haven't much this year, um, but I need to get back into that. I'm thinking this, this method on hand is not good. I need to do it on a spreadsheet would yeah. probably be the best way to do it. But yeah. uh, I knew that with this, you know, over five months, and this is, you know, this is during like Christmas and, and Thanksgiving. What's not even okay. I had 60 leads come in. 60 leads in five months. Uh, yeah, basically. About, about and this is not even the busy time. Yeah. Um, last week I had eight leads alone. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you're a two man operation, a small operation, that's a good amount of leads. And that's I have to refuse a, a bunch of those. I send them actually out to my competitor, my local competitor. Yeah. And you know, it, it, if you're a big company with a bunch of people working for, nah, that's not really, you probably have to close on more, but 80% of those I can't even get to. And we're 12 weeks out right now. So, I mean, it, it is what it is and it, it, it's going pretty good. But the other thing with Google that I think people on your, who are listening and watching this can really get is the referrals or the, uh, the uh, review side of it. Uh-huh. I have 26 five-star reviews on my Google over the last, it's been a year and a half since we've That's been trying. That's great. That is awesome. And, you know, they're hard to get. Yeah. They're not easy to get people to review. And there's techniques that I've been able to utilize that I think really help us. One of which is when you, when you and, and this is hard for some people, but when you do something for someone, even if it's something like, oh, are you going to seal that stone? Oh, yeah, I can put some sealer on it. No problem. I got some at home. Would you mind, you know, I'm doing something for you. Can you, you know, write me a review? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no problem. And once you offer them something, they feel like they have to reciprocate it, right? And what it does for me is, yes, people can, I get people all the time that say, oh, yeah, I'll leave you a five-star review and never do. Yeah. And it's not because they weren't happy. It's just because it's hard to get people to do that stuff. Yeah. But once you offer them something and once you do something for them, you can then hold them accountable for actually doing it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I like the last time I did it, I, I, the guy needed his backsplash siliconed. And I said, yeah, I'll silicone it for nothing for you. If you leave me a five-star review, 
oh, I usually, I usually don't leave reviews unless I'm happy. I'm like, well, are you happy? Oh yeah, I'm happy. Okay. Well, I'm going to silicone that for you for free. Yeah. And, and you know, it took him like, it took him three days to do it. And yeah. I reminded, and I reminded him within those three days. Good for you. But, yeah. Yeah. But if it was just one of these deals where he's like, oh yeah, I'll leave you a review and you didn't give him anything. If you reminding him of that, yeah. you would feel like you're being pushy. Yeah. But you know, it just, it's a good technique to use. And, and also another thing is let people know at the beginning of the job that you're going to be doing this job and you're hoping to, to get a five-star review at the end of it. Plant, yeah. the, plant the seed early. There you go. Uh, so that's a couple things that have worked for us. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and that really helps your Google ranking too, I believe. Oh, um, for sure. For sure. Yeah. 26 five-star reviews. That's, that's amazing. Good job on that. And eight, eight to 12 leads coming in every week um, for a two man business, two man crew. I mean, that's what, that's exactly where you want to be at friends, because once you're in that position, once you're in the position Ben's in and Hamilton tile are, are in, um, then, then you can start raising your prices to where they need to be and to where you don't have to worry because those leads are going to come in. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just yeah. coming in. Well, you know, it put us in a great position. Like what inspired me to do this was three years ago, we were basically, J Jason, my, uh, the owner of our company, he had basically, the, his partner had died and okay. he, and he switched the, uh, the uh, he started his own company in his name. Yeah. And we basically had, we had one builder we were working for. We were working for 2008 prices as yeah. far as, you know, deep recession style prices. Yeah. And Jason just never pushed this guy to increase his prices. Yeah. And I approached Jason. I said, I need more money. I need a raise. Yeah. You, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working hard, whatever. He's like, there's no money. Yeah. And I believed him. I believed him. Yeah. And what I started doing was I started working on our website. I started to develop our, my own, our own leads. He we asked you to do this? No. Okay. So you went out and did this on your own for another, for your employer's business, correct? Yes, because I wanted to make more money. Yeah. And it, the, the only way, if you're a helper out there and you want to make money, you provide value to the guy that you're working for. And it doesn't necessarily mean setting more tile or if he has something that he needs done, pick it up. We all have our little talents that, you know, some that the owner might not have, right? Awesome. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, yeah, so the best thing that we ever did was put ourselves in the position that we could lose this builder. Yeah. Builder, builder didn't want to pay more. That's fine. We'll exactly. book our own work. We'll book yeah. our own private stuff. A yeah. lot of the reason why these builders get to make the kind of money they do and get to dictate to you yeah. uh, how things are going to go is because they do sales. Yeah. They do marketing. That's where the money is. And um, it's, it, it's the, in the experience. It's not necessarily in the actual tile part. Yeah. The tile part is important. Yeah. But the other stuff is pretty important too. And so that's, yeah. So 10 years ago, you were in a position where you needed more money and you asked your boss, boss, can I get a raise? No, there's no money. I mean, most kids, you know, most people, um, young adults would, would say, okay, and start immediately looking for another job. They might even start looking for another trade. You took initiative, you took the bull by the horns and you started creating work and started generating leads. 10 years later, did you get that raise? <laughs> I know yeah, you it, it, it did not, it's not that, it's five years, but yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, Only five years later, and I know, I know that you're still, you know, you're still working with Jason. So of course, of course you got that raise. Of course he saw the value in, in what you were doing, right? Yeah. and. The, the, I think the biggest thing is why I didn't leave is because I knew I had a good guy that I was working with. Yeah. A loyal guy, a smart guy. I could see in him that he had something marketable. The problem with a lot of the craftsmen is that they can't market themselves. Mm -hmm. I looked at his work and then I had worked for other people and yeah. I said, this guy is special. He cares about what he's doing. He should be making unbelievable amounts of money for what he's doing. Yeah. And it's as simple as 
when, when I see him doing something that somebody else isn't doing, or when I see a special detail that he does, I tell the customer, I say, look at that guy. That's unbelievable. That's part of marketing. Yeah. Um, I think as craftsmen, we need to market ourselves. We need to be, you know, there is a certain amount of humility involved, obviously, but if you don't tell the customer what you're doing, they're not going to necessarily know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. And that's, that, that's basically, I could tell that there was something that, that had value there that I could sell. Yeah. And it, it, it was him. A unique really talent, cool. yeah. a unique talent that necess- that wasn't going to do it himself, mm-hmm. right? For whatever for whatever reason, whether it's confidence, and I kind of dragged him along, kicking and screaming, to be honest. Yeah. Um. And, and but once now that we're making that good money, he's like, "Wow, this stuff works. Let's keep yeah. doing." It. Yeah. And, um, Don't stop now, right? Yeah. So, so you wrote in, in one of your recent blogs that, you know, uh, from the beginning, Jason treated you with dignity. And he also understood that if you were going to, if he was going to succeed, that you had to succeed in your position. And, um, so I want to talk about all that, everything you just said, as well as that's those two statements. I want to talk about it first from Jason's view. In other words, if there's a tile contractor out there now, and many of them are struggling to find good help, how can they find good help in and not just train somebody that's going to leave, but train somebody that's going to stick around and maybe form a partnership, um, whether it be, you know, on paper or just a verbal like commitment to each other, you know, can you, can you kind of enlighten us on that? Like how, if, if you were to give me some advice as a, as a boss to, to find a good employee, a good helper that I can train up and we can have that, that relationship with, is there, is there one or two things you can touch on? I think so. I think one of the great things with, with Jason is he's always kept his ego in check. Okay. Um, yeah, we fight. We probably have a fight every six months or so. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's never one of those drop down, drag out fights. Um, yeah. You know, when you have a fight with somebody you're working for, always make sure you don't say something that you can't take back. Yeah. And that works well with your wife too, or your significant yeah. other or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so that was one thing. And as far as the dignity is concerned, is I had worked with people in the past that were very stingy about giving up their trade knowledge. Okay. Because they felt like maybe I would be a competitor in the future or whatever. Jason was never like that. He wanted to, he, he wanted to train me up. And I know it is hard to find people to work and that are wanting to make a career out of it. But um, don't, be cynical about it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I hate to say that it's all mindset, but a lot of it is mindset. You know, um, one example of, we used to meet at his house at eight o'clock and I would, I'm not very good at showing up at eight o'clock. I would show up at eight Oh five, eight ten, yeah. And this happened for three years pretty much. And if he had fired me that first time over not showing up, if showing up five minutes late, he would have never been able to reap the benefits of where we are now. Yeah. Well, maybe it's overlooking one little small thing like that. You know, again, it's the ego part of it. Yeah. Sometimes our egos get in the way. Yeah. And I think another thing is uh, developing a system. He's okay. really good at using a system in order. He, he developed systems to build showers and to remodel bathrooms that was easily transferable to me. Okay. And I was kind of green when I first came on as far as the tile is concerned. I read a tape measure. Yeah. That's pretty much the best thing you could probably have in somebody that you take on is yeah. you read a tape measure. That's probably one skill that is um, non-negotiable. Right. <laughs> you know? And I don't know. They, they, I, was a, I was a sports guy and I was a theater guy when I was young. Okay. So I was always very coachable. Yeah. You know, I, I was a boxer. So I would watch the other guys in the gym and I would say, I'm just going to mimic what he's doing. Okay. Or when I was playing football, the best player, I would try to mimic that guy. Or theater was another thing. Um, with the, the director would tell me to do something or whatever. And I would just, I was always coachable. Yeah. So look for somebody that's coachable, I think, is, uh, is another great thing. Yeah. Um, and it, that, that's a good that, point. That, I think that coachability is huge, Somebody especially who, in this. Yeah. 
somebody who played on teams, right? Or was a team player. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Man, those are some really good tips. Thank you. Um, what about, what about from the other, the opposite? What about helpers who are wanting to, you know, earn more or come up in this trade? Um, you know, how can they, you know, we talked about it a little bit, I guess. I, I don't know if I'm being redundant here. Do you have anything more to input? Look, look for the deficits. The guy that you're working for right now, he has a deficit, something that he's not good at. Okay. Maybe you're standing there. Run his Instagram account. Ask him. He's, his phone is blowing up in his pocket right now. Yeah. Say, hey, take a, a phone training course. You have him on the internet. Start doing research on how to talk on the phone. Yeah. And start taking that guy's phone calls while he's set in tile. Okay. That, find a deficit. The guy you're working for has something that he is not good at. Yeah. And if you're a millennial, you, ought, you might run a computer better than he did. That's, that's, that's me. You yeah. know, I, I, uh, when I was uh, 14 years old, I made a John Wayne tribute site on homestead.com. Yeah. And pretty simple. I got it on YouTube. I got the, the bots. I got it uh, optimized. And those rudimentary, very simple skills that I developed back then, I used them now to, to make our website, right? Yeah. So the, the guy has a deficit of some kind. Yeah, and we all do. See if you can find it and, 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 and add your skills to, to, to what he's doing, right? It's, being a helper is more than carrying water and cutting tile. Yes, I know it's good. But, you know, it's, you, can, you can make it more than that. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. I, I know a lot of people are going to benefit from, from what you just said. Um, I know I did. That's, that's a great viewpoint. And I know you've got other viewpoints. We talked a little bit about it in the beginning with your exercise routine. Um, I, I know also you mentioned you, you like to eat a healthy and you like to keep your mindset really sharp. Um, can we talk about mindset a little bit? Absolutely. I really like affirmations. Okay. Daily affirmations. Um, some, some, you know, I get fired up about stuff. One of my favorite ones, I have the strength to control my emotions and control the words that come out of my mouth. Um, do you know Diablo on online on Instagram? Yeah. yeah. He talks about emotional control a lot. Yeah. That is huge. The, I mean, that, that's a big one. Yeah. And I have had problems with it in the past. I still have problems with it, but when I made the decision in my life to stop going with my heart, uh, frankly, society tells us that our feelings are the most important thing and start going with my brain, my whole life changed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, as far as mindsets are going, I like the daily affirmations. If you can think of, uh, of something that you're working on and repeat it to yourself every day, every morning, when you get up, I like routines. And you memorize those? Then? Yeah, that particular one. Yeah, okay. I say that pretty much every day. Okay. Um, I like routines as well. You know, I like a lot of people are like the get up and, and, and go to work 15 minutes, you yeah. know, from the time they wake up out of bed to the time they, they get in their car and they're headed to work. Yeah. I like to wake up two hours early. I like to read a book every day. We got plenty of books to talk about here. Yeah. I like to dig into a book every day and read at least 20 pages. Yeah. Right. Um, I like to just sit down and be quiet, hit the news, hit you just two hours before I, before I hit, head off. That yeah. way my, my customer, the project I'm working on, I'm prepared for it. I'm not just like going into it blind. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so a day, a daily routine and you can do that on the job site too. set your job site up the same way every single day. What, what was my thing? Uh, four water buckets every day, one for spinning, one for spinning your paddle out, one clean water, one, another clean water to wash your hands and one to fill up the saw, whatever, you know, Yeah. every single day, just get into a routine yeah. and it's all about the little things, you know, in, in my mind, it's all yeah, about those little things add up. I mean, I can see we're having the, having your helper or if you are the helper to have those four buckets of water set up every single day. I mean, they're there, you know, they're there. It's, it's rare that you'll need a fifth one, you know? 
here, 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 here's another thing. If you're a helper, how about this one? And Jason's going to love this because he's been in this business 20 years and I'm constantly asking him where his tape, he's asking me where his tape measure is. Yeah. Here we go. A five in one in your back pocket, a tape measure, a knife, a pencil, and a marker. Damn. Every day that you start the day, just have those things ready. And I'm telling you, the guy that, that's setting the tile, he's going to be asking you, where's yeah. the five in one? And whenever Jason asks me that, I got one right in my back pocket. Yeah. And then the trick is to get him to hand it back to me. Yeah. Don't on the floor. Hand it, give it back. Yeah. Like, give, me, give me my five and one back. Give me my <laughs> tape back. Those, if you're a helper, those things right there, the walk, just have your tools ready. It's like, what do they say when you're, when you're partying? Um, phone, wallet, keys. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a helper, five and one, tape measure, pencil, marker, knife. Yeah. Just have them all the time. That's all you need. <laughs> Would you say that that for your helper, is that what you carry basically? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it, if we're doing ceramic, you know, uh, we might include nippers in there mm -hmm. or something like that. But um, it's rare. That's one thing. That's one thing the old school guys are good with is the nippers. I'm horrible with nippers. I like, like some, I'll, I'll use the saw instead of nippers. And Jason's like, you could have just used these nippers for this. I don't know anything about the nippers. That's yeah. old school from the days of a four and a quarter by four and a quarter, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't get used much anymore. No, no. But, but they do have their place. So that's good. Big time. Big time. But I love, I love just being organized, um, having your tools organized. Like you said, I mean, you're going to, you're going to get through the day so much easier and be so much more efficient. And from a helper's viewpoint, you know, yeah, that, that would mean, you know, that would start to impress on the, on the owner, the installer's mind that this guy's, you know, this guy's valuable, you know, maybe he does deserve an extra dollar an hour raise or whatever the case might be, because you're not, you're not always running. It, it might take 10 minutes to go get a margin trawl. If you're working upstairs and you run into the homeowner, it might take 15, you know, <laughs> and if yeah, you exactly. have it in your back pocket, I mean, that's, that's going to, um, you know, increase your, increase your value to the installer. So I like that tip. Thank you. Big time. You're welcome. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you, you, you brought out a few books, um, and I know you're a big podcast listener. Can we talk about a few of your favorite books and what they've meant to you and how they've helped you? Yeah. Um, one of my favorite ones that I can really, that I really recommend people check out. I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with, uh, it's tough cause I got a bunch of them. Yeah. But, um, for my business, uh, negotiating. That's a big thing. Yeah. Um, and it's not necessarily about dollar amounts, but you're kind of negotiating whenever you talk to somebody in a way, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're kind of, you know, working out a deal between the two of you, what, whenever you do anything with yeah. your, uh, um, and, and people that are natural at it, it's, it's, it's amazing. I used to know this guy that was, would go to garage sales and he would buy some stuff. I'd be like, how much did you pay for that? And I would watch this guy work. And he would just, he people loved him. He would, uh, just all this different stuff. And then once you start kind of understanding, reading these books like this one, Never Split the Difference. And it's written by a guy named Chris Voss. And mm -hmm. he was an FBI negotiator. And he talks, he talks a lot about the tools that he used during his FBI days that cross over into the business world. So things like accusation audits, that's yeah. a good one to where if you did something wrong, for example, or if there's an elephant in the room, you just say, hey, like if, if it took you a while to call somebody back, you say, hey, I know you're going to hate me. I didn't immediately call back, but you know, it's an accusation audit. You know, you, somebody's going to say something. You hit it first. Okay. Like, what that person say to you? Well, okay. I guess it's no big deal, right? Yeah. Um, and he talked, or he talks about mirroring. That's another thing. You know, when somebody, when, when, when the first question that I ask on the phone, when somebody calls me is, can you tell me a bit about your project? Okay. okay. Blah, blah, blah. I want this shower built. I want this here, this here, and that there. And I'll, and I'll say, okay, so you want a shower built. You pretty much want an inset band, an inset box and this. Yeah. I just mirrored what they said basically. And it builds confidence in people, right? Um, that you were listening. It builds confidence that you were listening. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, negotiating is a lot more about and it negotiating. Like I said, it it it, it uh, crosses over into sales. 
because yeah. that's a thing with sales too, is you're just listening to people. Um, yeah. another, another great one is this one. It's by a guy named Stuart Diamond. And he, uh, and you can see, you know, I got the, uh, yeah, uh, you- bookmarks in there. But he talks about, um, he was a, he's a professor at the school, Wharton School of Business. And I got a couple of great things out of this book. One of them is um, when you have a problem, say, with any company, what I'll do now is I'll go on their website and I'll read their own mission statement. And I'll say, do you feel like, if I have a problem, do you feel like you're, uh, you're, you're, you're living up to your own mission statement. So you pick out the standards uh, of of whoever you're talking to. Another one is incrementalism. He talks about, instead of saying like, I'm very forward about how I say things and Kurt, um, instead, instead of just blurting it right out immediately, just go a little bit at a time before you let out the big news, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when, on my phone and my phone qualification questions, I kind of work up to the budget question. Okay. I don't just come right out with it. Yeah. So that's another, that's another good one. And this guy right here, what's the name of that book? It's called getting more by Stuart diamond. Okay. And it's just got a ton of great information. Now this book is the banger of all books that I think people could that people could get a lot out of, yeah. and it has psychology behind it. But it's called Influence by Robert Cialdini. A lot of people talk about this book. Um, if you if you're a podcast person, you've heard people talk about this book before. But um, this is a great one, and this helped me because um, it just I liked the part that he was talking about. What are they um? People want to uh, reciprocate. Right. So when you do something for them, they automatically want to do something for you, for example. That's one, that's one good part. Um, what was the other one? Social, he talks a lot about social proof. So um, with, uh, with reviews, people will read your reviews, and that gives them proof that other people are talking positively about you. Yeah, uh, nice. Consistency, that's another one. Uh, um, he talks about... When people hand you one check, they want to keep handing you checks. They want to be consistent about it. So oftentimes when people call me, and this isn't 100% of the time, like if somebody calls me and says, I've been on your website, I've looked at your YouTube, I've read your blog, I want you to come out and do an estimate. Yeah. I'll come right out, usually, just because they've put in, so invested some time into their project. Okay. So when people call me and they're just like, I want you to come out. You know, and I ask the questions and they're not really, you know, responding in a way that I like. I'll say, yeah, absolutely. We do have an $89 consultation fee that it will come back to you at the end of the job. And uh, we do this because our, on average, our estimate takes about five hours to produce. And also it's a symbol of your seriousness about getting the project done. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So they hand me that first $89. The psychology says... They're going to want to hand me some more money after that. They've already I've invested, actually, right? Yeah. I've actually seen that work. Nice. When I charge people $89 to come out and look at their stuff, they usually hire us. So it's a great technique to use, the cons- consistency. This one's more about, like, the psychology behind what persuasion and, and, and how to influence people. Yeah. Another, another great guy to read is Scott Adams. He's the Dilbert guy. Okay. He, Gilbert cartoon. Now he's yeah. a political commentator. Um, he, he's, he, he's great. He talks about a lot about persuasion and he has one book, how to, how to lose it, everything and still win big. And okay. I love that book because he talked about um, uh, a t- what he calls a talent stack to where everybody out there that's listening is really great at setting tile. Obviously that's your number one thing you're great at. Yeah. But all the other little things that you're good at, that's your talent stack. Okay. So, so I'm, a ta- I'm a tile guy, but my marketing, my phone sales, my website stuff, all those little things, you know, help drive my main talent, right? So that's your talent stack. Yeah. So Scott Adams is another great one. Nice. Um, for a helper. Let me just mention this one last book for a helper. If you're just getting into the business, this is called The Curmudgeon's Guide to Getting Ahead. And it's by Charles Murray. And this is one of the first books I read. And it's just basically an old, grumpy old man that uh, is very perceptive about the world. 
and he has little hip tips in here about improving your uh, improving um, your first impression, for example, um, words to use, how to speak better, how to dress for success, um, uh, how just all sorts of cool stuff for a young man that's 18 years old that yeah. kind of maybe you grew up in kind of like the hippie land where you, you can do whatever you want to do and your parents aren't going to discipline you or whatever. This is for you before you get out into the real world. To, <laughs> you can read this book. Right on. And then and I'll, I'll make sure to send um, all of you friends links to all these books that he mentioned. So that one, what, what, one more book that's builder specific. Yeah, one, definitely. One more. Yeah, no problem. I love, I love your excitement about books. It's all, it's the it's elements easy. of building. Okay. This is a great one for the guy out there that says that maybe has imposter syndrome that says I'm, I'm not good enough to, to charge good money or, you know, what I do isn't worth it. This book will, will show you that, you know, other people are doing it. Yeah. That you are worth it. And this gives a lot of interesting techniques about the building game, about, you know, making up bids, about just all sorts of different stuff. I really, you know, I know Markup and Profit and all these other books. I think out of all of them, this is the best one. Oh, and you yeah, 20, it's $28, I believe, on, um, on, uh, on Amazon. So Yeah, that's not bad. Who's the author on that one? That's a Mark Q. Curson. And, and finally, if you're a business owner and thinking about getting into business, we have a lot of misperceptions about how the economy works and economics in general. Frankly, if you're in business, you're in the economy and you need to know a little bit of something about economics. Yeah. Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson kind of goes over the econ it, it, how a basic overview of, of economics. And it's a great book to, 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 to read um, to kind of, to, to kind of get you into the mindset of business and, and economics. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a, that's a few of them. That's a very short overview. I got about eight more here, but. Yeah. So that's, that's just a tip of the iceberg um, for, for Ben here with his library friends. And like he said, the, the way he's able to do this is carve out 20 minutes and you do that seven days a week or, a pro, you know, yeah, try 20, 20, yeah, 20 pages a day. 20, oh, 20 pages a day. That's where the 20 came from. So it's very yeah. doable. I mean, you know, and, you know, he's even um, inspiring me to, to read more. Um, I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, audio books, but I really want to get back into reading. Um, so thank you, Ben, for, for that inspiration. Man, when you see, when you see your bookshelf building, yeah. when you see that those pages turning and you say, wow, this is, you know, it's a great rewarding feeling. And yeah. the great thing about reading is you're building a website now. Yeah. It's going to help you with your writing. The key to being a good writer is reading. Interesting. Yeah. It, it, it really is. I pick up a lot of different things from reading books and I, again, I mimic them in my writing. Yeah. And you want to be a good, if you want to be a good writer, start reading more and you'll see, you'll, you'll really improve. You'll, you'll, you'll start picking up little things and it'll help you a lot. Nice. Yeah. Love it. That's great tips. How about, how about podcasts? What are your top several podcasts that you listen to? I really like this one called the buyer's mind. It's by Je It's, it's a guy named Jeff Shore and he's a sales guy and he has great, they're, they're not super long. They're half hour long podcasts and he, uh, he gives great tips and gets, has great interviews. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the, one of the last one. One of the last ones I read, he, uh, um, he, he, he went into like price objections and when people say, ah, your price is too high, blah, blah, blah. He says, just ask him, tell me more about that. Yeah. Don't, don't get defensive. Don't any of that stuff. Just say, Hey, tell me more. It could be multiple things. It could be, they can't afford you. Yeah. And at that point you just know that, okay, they can't afford me. Yeah. I'm not going to change their mind. Yeah. Or it could be they're not used to paying that much. Okay, then you can work from there. But he's big on listening. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, 
I, I believe I listened to that one that you're referencing and I believe um, you turned me on to the buyer's mind. I think you sent me that via Instagram. So thank you. Yeah, you're I welcome. enjoyed that. I enjoyed that one as well. Cause basically it's like, it's not a big deal if people can't afford you. You just need to figure out why, you know, maybe they don't see the value cause he compared it to a watch, right? Yeah. Maybe they don't see the value, but maybe they, maybe you need to help them see the value or maybe they just, maybe there's no way they would ever buy a, a ten thousand dollar watch. Uh, what is that watch called? I forget. But uh, Rolex. Rolex. Maybe they. You know, Ron Nash is gonna. Uh, he's a watch guy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> maybe they would never buy a ten thousand dollar watch because they just don't have ten thousand dollars. Or maybe they just need to understand the value of that Rolex. So you're a, you're big on the contractor fight too. Uh, yeah. With Tom Reber, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. I love that guy's show. I've been. I've been on his stuff for a couple of years now. Yeah. I originally found him on YouTube, but he got me valuing me and Jason. I got Jason hooked on Reber too. Yeah. Because he got he got us valuing our time. Exactly. That time, driving out to see somebody's project and all that, it can be done over the phone. Yeah. Just tell them from the start, take control of the sales process from the start. Tell them the first step of my process is you send me some pictures of your process or your project. I, I send out a, a quick estimate of what I think it's cost. If that's in your price range, I'll come out and do a full consultation. We'll do a project evaluation and I'll send out a detailed proposal. Yeah. Um, and that really gets rid of the price shoppers because as tile guys, yeah. you can pretty much tell people a range of yeah. what something costs from pictures. I love it. And, and, and you, you have a blog post um, talking about how much a shower, how much a shower and a bathroom floor costs. And it's considerably higher than a lot of my tile friends talk about and sell themselves at. But the, the fact of the matter is it's higher for a reason. I mean, not only do you get eight leads a, a week, um, but when you price something so low, so competitive, of course, you're like, well, I got to go look at it and measure it. And it's like, no, I, I believe like you should, if you've been doing this longer than 10 years, you should know approximately what, what you're going to charge for every single shower. I mean, yeah, there's very, there's variables, but it, if you're like, no, no, I, I really need to look at it. Luke. I, it's like, okay, obviously your prices are so low. There's no wiggle room. You know, there's no, there's no like, Oh, you know, Oh, there's an extra day. Well, you know, if your prices are right, it's like, well, spend that extra day and just do it because because you priced it right from the beginning. You didn't price it for three days. Well, people start to value your time if they know you have kind of a process that, you know, um, the, the, the people that want you to just run right out, they don't, they're not going to value your time. You're just another guy. One of my qualification questions is, will you be getting other bids? Nice. Yeah. What does the winning bid look like? I'll, I'll, and I say, I ask this because I just want to know if I'm competing against a comparable size company or a comparable company. Yeah. If I'm competing against Joe Handyman or, or Billy that's living in your neighbor's basement, I'm going to say I'm the, the, my presumption is that I'm probably not going to end up booking that job. Yeah. Right. So that's a really good question to ask. Have you had tile work done before? That's another one of my favorite questions. Yeah. Yeah, I've had tile work done before. I didn't really like that guy. Oh, really? So what happened? Oh, well, this, that, and the other thing, right? It's a, it just gives you an idea of yeah, what who you're dealing uh, with. Yeah. You can figure out if it's a good lead from the questions you ask on the phone. Yeah. And Re Reber really got me going on the questions over the phone. His, his sale, his sales stuff is really on point. Yeah. Um, you, so you got, so you have a, you have a pre list of questions, maybe 10, how many, like 10, 12. Or, or I write everything out. I laminate my stuff. So yeah. one goes in the truck, one goes to Jason, one goes on my board. It's like 10 questions basically. So there's no, so 10 questions and you're getting eight leads a week, eight phone calls a week. About how many of those phone calls go through to actually you going out to look at that job? Not many. Okay. A lot of them are pictures first. Yeah. A lot of people don't even want to send you pictures and yeah. that's fine. If you can't go through that little amount of effort, yeah. snap a picture, right? Yeah. I don't want to work for you. Exactly. But like last weekend, I ran all those people basically through like the first guy that called me, 
he called me, he went to my website, he went to tile house and, uh, and, 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 and got our number from the sales lady there. Then he called me. I got through like three questions before I, I, and I was like, yeah, this is the guy I want to work for. I basically asked him, Hey, can I ask you a few questions to decide if we're a good fit? I always ask that question first. Why? Because I've had a guy that I started asking questions without asking permission. He's like, I feel like I'm being interrogated. Click. Jason and I laugh about that all the time. <laughs> it's like, how are we supposed to know if we want to work for you if we don't ask questions? Yeah. But he, I feel like I'm being interrogated. Yeah. So I always ask now. May I ask you a few questions in regards to your pro project? Oh, sure. Can you tell me a bit about your project? The guy told me a bit about his project. I asked, have you researched my company at all? That's a great one. You can yeah. tell you're, that's a good lead. If they went on your website, if they went on your YouTube, con if they saw your content, that's yeah. a good one. He said, oh, yeah, I love your content. I went on your website. I saw your Ruby, blah, blah, blah. Great. Nice. I, I said, I want you, you're going to hate me for this accusation audit, but we're 12 weeks out right now. How can I convince you to wait for us? You, he said, you can convince me by A, B, C, and D. He's, like, he's a doctor, so he had a very analytical mind. And yeah. I said, yep, we check all those boxes. Um, so he, are yeah. you available this weekend? Yeah, I am. 11, 11 a.m. One of the things he said is, oh, I've had builders out here in the past and they just blow me off and they're, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're flaky as heck. I don't want that. I want, yeah. I'm like, yeah, we check all those boxes. When can I meet you? The second one, which I've had really good luck with is through my contact list on my website. Um, the guy, uh, the guy emailed me first. And so I had started emailing him. I'm like, just send me some pictures of what you got. Or no, I said, uh, send me some pictures of what you got. He sent me the pictures. I sent him a rough number. He's like, yeah, that sounds about right. I said, well, send me your phone number and I'll give you a short, con I'll have a short conversation with you about the project. Called him up. He, he was pretty much really, he was, I could tell he was a good lead just from the questions and doing it all the time. Yeah. And I went out and saw it and I actually used a tip from your, from your, uh, from your show, the guy from Houston, who was it with the, the spreadsheet? Yeah, Paul Lucia. Paul Lucia with, with, the, gla with the glass tile thing. He, yeah. He's like, cut up some glass tile and show them the difference between a good cut and a bad cut. Yeah. So I did that. Cool. And, you know, um, the, so last week, yeah. through my qualification process, yeah, I don't usually go out and see them, but when we do go out and see them, we book them. So yeah. last weekend, I booked two jobs, 100% booking rate for good money. Nice. Congratulations. Right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you kind of run people through a little bit of, a, of, of hoops a little bit, but you're not going to be running out around all the time. Yeah. I do CrossFit every night after work. That means I'm not going out and looking at jobs I'm not going to get. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's right. Jason has time with his family. He's not going out and looking at stuff that he has no chance of getting. Yeah. If you can cut, if you start to value your time and start realizing time is money and have that funnel, like Steve said, you have to have your funnel and you have to have things coming out the end of it. Yeah. You can do that. You can be a little bit more picky about the work you choose. Yeah. Now, I don't know how it works for, for a company with 20 guys. You probably have well, to. Well, it's the same. It's the same system. It's just a bigger funnel. You know how funnels they come in quart size. They also come in gallon size, right? Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it works for us. I, I mean, I just try to do – I tell people from the start, too. Yeah. People love becauses. This is something I learned from the sales book. People are a lot more uh, – a lot nicer, and they're a lot easier to deal with if you give them a reason. Yeah. I say, hey, listen. They'll say, oh, I want you to come out for an estimate. Well, can we just uh, – let, let's, start, let's start with just a short conversation on the phone. We do this because we're a small two-man crew. We do our sales and we do the work. So most of this I'd like to just do on the phone for now. People usually yeah. understand that. Oh, I get it. Okay. I think what I do a good job of on our website is giving the impression of being a bigger company than I really am. Yeah. And I want people to – I want people to, to do that too. If you're a small company, put out that impression that you're a big company. Yeah. Get that logo. Get your shirts made. Yeah. Dress nice. Yeah. Um, 
um, just put the impression that you're a lot bigger than you are. And I think you'll make money. You'll make more money. Yeah. Because people don't, people don't know that you're running your business out of your garage. They don't yeah. Know. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter either. If you provide them with a great finished product, that's ultimately all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really great. Uh, man, we went over so much here. I really enjoyed this interview. Thank you so much. Um, you mentioned something in, in one of your latest blog posts about identity and tile and, and that tile gave you an identity. Can yep. you expand a little bit about what you meant on that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When I first got into this whole thing, you know, I was kind of at the bottom of the barrel, having, having tough time in life, not, not knowing what I wanted to do, not really, you know, it was tough. And I met Jason, believe it or not, on a Craigslist ad. Mm -hmm. And he said the thing that popped out to him about me was that I, my, my, my dog's playing with a... Uh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> the thing he said, he said, the thing that popped out about me to him was the fact that I could formulate a sentence through an email. Yeah. Two thumbs up. Yeah. Good start. Yeah. So I, I, uh, he, he was getting hundreds of emails or whatever. I, yeah. So I, I went to the first, for the first day. And at that time I wasn't anything special. I mean, I think I, I drove an old beat up pickup. I didn't have any money. You know, I was just, I mean, I had worked in construction, but you know, it was just, I was good for a helper. I was good for making cuts. Yeah. Right. And as the years passed, I became a tile guy, right? Yeah. We live in a world with so much demoralization, mm. uh, so much sadness, disillusionment amongst yeah. men, yeah. Um, so much um, um, indecisiveness amongst men. Uh -huh. And yeah. everybody is looking for, for an identity. To, so, some people do it, oh, I'm a dad. Well, I'm that too. Yeah. But tile at the end of the day, I'm a dad. I do, I do, I exercise, I read, but I'm a tile guy. Yeah. When I look somebody at somebody, I say, I, I'm a tile guy. I, I have something to sell you. Yeah. I, I, you know, you need a bathroom. I'm your man. That's, That's my cool. identity. Yeah. And I don't, I don't worry about, I, I don't, I don't worry about being sad. I don't worry about, you know, um, anxiety or any of this stuff. I worry about making money building stuff with my hands. If a young man coming out of high school, Gen Z, I know things are changing a little bit uh, with the, with the uh, mindset of humanity. Making something with your hands is the greatest reward that you can ever have. Our ancestors knew that. Yeah. They knew that. Yeah. If you're coming out of high school, give the trades a shot. Yeah. You'll never find anything more rewarding than going to work. And, and, and making a living using your hands, right? Yeah. Having your own business, that is the most rewarding thing that you can ever really do. It's a lot of hard work, don't get me wrong. It's a ton of hard work. And you know, you, you, you think, but when you get good at it, you don't worry about the work coming in and you know, you, you build relationships. It's, yeah. it, it's great, it, it, it is, it's your identity. It becomes your identity. Yeah. And. Tile has been one of those things that I, I got a little girl upstairs and a baby on the way, and those are tile kids. Yeah, <laughs> I support my wife at home, and and, and and through tile. Yeah, that's how I do it. Yeah, and, and and if and and you know it's not it's not the most glamorous thing, but when I'm at work, I'm not looking for a place to hide from the boss. Yeah. I'm not looking for a place to sleep to get the day done with. Yeah, you know. I'm excited to go in and do my thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of young men out there that need something, and the yeah. trades can really, really provide that. You won't get in debt, right? You won't yeah. learn a bunch of unnecessary stuff that you don't need to know about. Yeah. Uh, you won't be um, demoralized. Yeah. Get into the trades, start working, and you'll and you'll see you'll you, your uh your spirits will quickly 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 lift. Nice. Um, think of it as a, a competition. You're trying to be better than the next guy. Yeah. And yourself at the same time. Yeah, right? you're always trying to beat your rec your own personal record, right? Man, that is that is so powerful. Thank you for sharing that message. You know, Ben. Um, it's like the trades, you know, have kind of taken a backseat over the years and they're, 
you know, we get reports that they're taking shop class out of, out of high schools and things of this nature. But on the other hand, you know, with, with Instagram and social media now, I see, I see a raise up, or, you know, the trades are rising up again. And so we, we appreciate your, your voice there and, and your encouragement because a lot, of, a lot of high school kids now are, you know, starting to think, think about the trades and we want to attract them to the tile industry because we don't want the tile industry becoming a dying thing. I mean, um, as, as we age, you know, we need people to replace us. So we want to share, share what we know and, um, you know, encourage others and show them that this is an industry that is not only rewarding, you know, physically, mentally, um, you know, you get to beautify homes, but it's also rewarding in your, on your pocketbook. I mean, this is one of the best trades. And I believe this is one of the trades where you can make the most money. I mean, listen, we're, you know, we're selling artwork, we're selling functioning artwork in people's homes. And it's something that they do not need. You know, they need to build a home. You need electrical, you need plumbing. You do not need porcelain or ceramic or glass tile, God forbid. So in my opinion, it's one of the top, it should be one of the top paying trades. So I, you know, we want to continue to attract people to this trade because there's a lot of talent out there. So thank you for sharing that message. Yeah. So it's possible to have a really good life. Yeah. You know, it yeah. really is. Uh, you, and, and it, yeah, I agree with everything that you said. And I, I hope young men start, you know, realizing that, you know, it is rewarding to build. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Absolutely. Well, Ben, uh, thank you so much. I know we're going to have to do another a second episode here because we've got a lot to dive in. If, if you'd be willing to do it, I'd love to have you back. And um, hopefully Jason, you know, your partner will join us one day. And Absolutely. You know, I, a, after this is all done, I'm going to say, oh, man, I had so much more stuff to say. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, check, check me out at HamiltonTileGA.com. Um, yeah, get a hold of me. How about Instagram? What's your Instagram um, handle so people can at, find you there? At Hamilton Tile GA. And then um, you're on Twitter as well. Yep. Um, my Twitter handle is at a tile guy's journey. And okay. that's just, that's just my musings during the day. That's the name of my blog to a tile guy's journey. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I really appreciate you having me on. I hope I can provide some value to the young guys out there that are getting into the business or the people that are, maybe struggling or um, that are kind of like us. I know there's a lot of me and Jason's out there Oh yeah, that, that are still struggling along and just kind of barely making it. And yeah. Let, let us be an example to you that it is possible. You just got to put your efforts in the right spot. Don't be afraid to get better and put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. I'm not, a, I, Jason is, doesn't have quarterback good looks. I don't have the quarterback good looks, but what we said is we're going to fake this sales thing until we make it. <laughs> we're going to fake the business thing until we make it. Yeah. Yeah. The tile side, we got it. Yeah. Remodeling bathrooms, no problem. Yeah. But all this other stuff, that's a hard stuff. Yeah. So put some time into that. Put an hour into it a week. You know, you burn an hour a week on other stuff. It doesn't matter. Put it into, yeah. you know, put it into your sales, put it into your marketing. Yeah. You know, I mean, it'll help. If you're listening to this podcast, you're obviously way ahead of some other people. Yeah. So I mean, just put it into practice. Try to pick up a book. You know, it, it, it is awesome. And, you know, you're, there's a lot of information out there that you can make yourself better. So I encourage everybody out there. Work on yourself, self-discovery, self-improvement. Um, don't be afraid to be critical of, of what you're doing and who you are and you, you can really make it out there. I mean, your, your, your only limitations are really yourself. And I, I wish I knew that in my early twenties, I wish I really understood that in my twenties. Now I do. Um, so get it on boys. You can do it. Very nice. That was awesome. I was just writing, taking some notes there. Thank you, Ben. You're well, welcome. this has been a pleasure, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you again. Luke, you are the man. You're doing, you're doing God's work out there. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that.